Thank you for joining me today for this week's Zhuangzi story. This story is about um, Zhuangzi himself. It's a story that Zhuangzi uses as his skill of preservation. After um, you, you, you finish the story, I think that you will agree with me that um, Zhuangzi is really, you can tell, I'm really impressed that uh, we can call him a master of persuasion. And the skill of persuasion is very important. Apparently in those Zhuangzi's times, and up until now to modern society, there are many books written that teach people how to fact factive, effectively um, uh, you have other people listen to you and agree to your ideas and how to influence and very positively of others. So let's see how Zhuangzi did 2,000 years ago. So Zhuangzi's time, the king of Zhao, Zhao is uh, a country uh, in China, and Zhuangzi's time, there's an emperor who is the Zhou, the Zhou dynasty, and then the, uh, there are many, many other little kingdoms, and each kingdom is ruled by uh, a ruler. So this is about um, the king of Zhao. So the king of Zhao was very fond of the sword fights. So, so a lot of swordsmen came to to his to his palace, and they um, they ended up to be to he says so they have he has over he has over because he likes to to have uh, swordsmen and uh, watch the sword fights. Therefore, a lot, a lot of swordsmen came to him. Ended up, he ended up having over 3,000 swordsmen that he supports as guests. It means he, he gives these people places to live, places to eat, and he just has them fight to see who is the better swordsman. So, day and night, the swordsmen, um, so this way, this way has happened for three years, and uh, you can imagine just supporting all these people who doesn't work and just fight, so the, 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 the state, so the kingdom of Zhao, has sunk into decline because the king probably is mostly focusing on watching the sword fights so he doesn't have enough time to to fall into the um, fall of the country and so he's spending so much money so his kingdom is going downhill therefore the other kings started to conspire against him because they see what he's doing uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there might be a chance that we might be able to take over and get get the land of the King of Zhao. You know, so so the the prince of Zhao uh, was very distressed at all of this, which is understandable. So he he is thinking he, he he if this is this has been going on for three years even though the story didn't say it but I'm guessing a lot of the king's um, the king's officials probably have tried to persuade the king the prince probably has done it many times and however they were not successful because for three years the king has not changed. So finally, the prince calls his men forward, saying, I am willing to offer a thousand gold for anyone who can 
who can talk to my father out of this this hobby of his, you know? This is really dangerous. It's threatening the safety of, of our country now. So one of his men said, I think that Zhuangzi can do this job. So he'd probably be like, said, try all methods. And so we, fi- we have to finally go to ask Zhuangzi for help. So the prince uh, sent messengers with a thousand gold to see Zhuangzi. And the Zhuangzi refused to accept the gold. Uh, however, he did agree to go with the messenger back to, to Zhao to, to meet with the prince. Once he uh, met with the prince, he asked, um, say, what do you want me to do? What your kind of help do you want from me that uh, that you gave me the, the one thousand gold for? And so the prince says, "I have heard, master, that you you are you are an enlightened sage, a great saint. So I'm offering a thousand gold as a gift." He so he says, now that since you refuse my gift, I do not dare to ask for your help. And so Zhuangzi replied, I have heard that you want uh, someone to, um, to be able to help to talk to the king out of this passion of his. So, just absorbed, obsessed, with, you know, with sword fights. So, um, so he says, now, if I go, and I successfully, if I go, and, and, and attempt to per, persuade the king, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm not successful, the king will get very mad at me, uh, and uh, I'll also have have failed to fulfill your hopes. So I will likely, probably, be executed by the king. Because imagine, if you're going to a king, you're, you're talking to the king, you're basically telling the king, stop doing these silly things that you're doing. And it's probably not going to go very well, so... When a king gets angry, you could lose your head. So, Zhuangzi says, if that's the case, well, what's the use of going to me? I am already dead. So, he says, if I become successful, and I was able to persuade the king and fulfill your hopes, then would, would anything that I would ask, would would you would you, anything that I would ask that you you keep your kingdom could afford would, would wouldn't you wouldn't you give it to me? So why 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 do I need this? Why do I need this now? If I can be successful, then 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 you'll be so happy that that I I won't get uh, I will get the uh, in in with the payment the gift. So the prince said. The prince is certainly happy to see that Zhuangzi is, is willing to um, try to uh, talk to the king. But he said, the trouble is that my father, the king, he refuses to see anyone but swordsmen. So he only wants to see swordsmen, good swordsmen, because he's all he can see the fight. Everyone else, no interest. So Zhuangzi says, fine, I guess I could do that. Ha, ha. I'm actually, actually very good at uh, uh, handling the sword. So, but then the prince continued to say, he says, but I see the swordsman that came to my, to see my father, 
the ones who he is willing to take in, they all have massy heads, messy hair, and bristling beards, and they wear these launching hats tied with this uh, very coarse tassels, and they wear these robes that cut short behind. Probably because, you know, in China, so a little background, in China, scholars wear chung shen, long clothes. So this this one piece of clothes that, that hangs all the way down to just around the knees. That you really have to, who's a scholar. And some people who go to fights, they do, do different type of work. Wang shen, they're like short. So this is like they wear these robes that's kind of short in the back. But it's probably just easy to be in a fight. So they have the, the this glare. They glare very fiercely. They don't really use their words much. So he says, the prince is looking at you. What's your, with your scholarly outfit that you're wearing? My father's not going to buy it. He's not your good swordsman. So Zhuang Zhu says, oh, that's okay. You can make me a swordsman outfit, and I will wear that to see the king. So that's very interesting. Very interesting now. So, so if you want to persuade somebody, you have to be, go with, with what they're open with. So imagine if Zhuang Zhu just with, with his current clothes, and he, and he showed up as a scholar, even if the, the king had had a very wise person, and he'd go up and talk to the king about all the bad things, all the damages, about why he should be indulging in just watching sword fights, then supporting all these swordsmen, you'd think the king would just say, okay, okay, yes, yes, now I get it. And then if he, he was the kind of person like that, that he would not be doing this for three years. So Zhuang Zhe clearly know that that, that route, that past, is not going to work. So what is a king like only willing to see swordsmen? So Zhuang Zhe says, yes, yes, I can, sh I can show up as a swordsman. Yeah, I can, I can show up as a swordsman. Okay, where were we? to um, go talk to the king. So, three days later, the prince got all the swordsman outfit made, and Zhuang Zhe dressed up as just like one of those swordsmen. From the description of the swordsman, uh, I can picture it almost as if we see movies of all the pirates and bandits. They dress very rough, and you know, the hair is all tight, and they talk in a very rough manner. So just imagine uh, that that's the image of a, of a swordsman. So Zhuang Zhe had to make himself look like that. So after he gets dressed, and he, he went with the prince to the palace to see the king. And uh, the king accepted them, and as Zhuang Zhe is saying, so you have, you asked my prince to introduce you to come see me, so what is it you want to show me? Zhuang Zhe said, I've heard that your majesty likes to see sword fights. Now, okay, let's go back a little bit. Uh, there's a piece we missed, but I think it will be fun to... to uh, so Zhuang Zhe and the prince came to see the king. And the king, in the story, says he drew his sword. The king drew his sword. So he waited with this bare blade in hand. It's 
So imagine you go up to see a king who has a sharp weapon in his hand. Uh, someone would be probably both the high stance of the king and the weapon. The king looks pretty scary. However, he says, Zhuangzi entered the hall. And he says, with unhurried steps... He got close to the king, but he didn't bow to the king. So, normally in those times, people of lower position come to the king. What they would really do is they get close to the king and they will immediately start to move with short little steps and bow. And that's a way to show respect to the king. But Zhuangzi, because he has to be, he's noticed he's acting as a swordsman, this rough character, therefore he would just be, you know, didn't walk in a way that would be someone who knows how to see the king. And he didn't bow to the king. So he's actually, he's got a character as believable as a rough tumble swordsman of the Gyanghu underworld. So in those times, those swordsmen are, are considered to be well-educated and knowing all good manners. They're very good at fights, but they're not very good at uh, sophistication and blah, 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 blah. So as the king asked him, what do you want to show me? Why do you come to me, says the king. So Zhuangzi says, I've heard that your majesty is fond of swords. So I have come to show you as a swordsman. So the king says, okay, okay, you're a swordsman. Okay, then how good are you? How good are you? Okay. So Zhuangzi says, my sword can kill a man every ten paces. So just imagine he's fighting with uh, a lots of people and every 10 steps, takes 10 steps, uh, 10 seconds, you'll be able to kill somebody. <coughs> even, though, even though it looks kind of like um, um, too rough, it's just his way of saying how good his skill is. So every 10 steps, you can kill another swordsman. And he says that uh, I can go like this for a thousand miles and nobody can stop me. That's just how good I am. Even other swordsmen who lined up for a thousand miles try to defeat me and they can't do it. No, they can't do it. So the king, after hearing this, was very happy. He said, oh, wow. If you can do that, you, you've got to be the best swordsman in, in this whole world. And uh, Zhuangzi says, the Zhuangzi explains about a little bit more about, um, about, about how many people he can defeat. So he talks about his skill. So he says, when I use my sword, I am in a state of emptiness, which means that I, my rival, cannot predict what I am going to do, because I am in a state of emptiness, and how can someone be able to judge from emptiness where the sword is going to go, the intention? And he says that, I swing my sword after my arrival has already taken action. However, my sword arrive at him before he can arrive at me. His sword cannot arrive at me, which means that I take action afterwards. Therefore, I know what his intention is. And my sword is so fast, not only I deflect his intention, but I can get at him before he gets at me. Just indicating 
that Chuang's uh, explaining his skills. So it sounds like, wow, he is, surely is, knows his skill in sword fighting. So the king gets very interested now. Okay, so now you just go back to where you are. And when I'm going to get my main ready. So when they are ready, I will call you to come and have a match with my best man. Since you are so good, right? So good. You see how good you are. So the king had spent seven days testing the skills of his swordsmen to get all the swordsmen together and try to figure out, have a lot of matches, try to figure out who, who is the peaked best swordsman. So imagine, imagine a big scale competition because over 60 were wounded in the whole process but eventually the king found the top five best swordsmen that he had he wants them to to come and fight with Zhuangzi so he called Zhuangzi to his palace saying that today let us see what happens when you have matches with the swordsman? And Zhuangzi said, Yes, this is what I have been wishing for. So, great, I'm going to do it. And the king was curious. So he says, What kind of weapon are you going to use? You going to use a long sword or a short sword? And Zhuangzi says, I have three swords. And please let me explain to you what these three swords are. Then we can put these swords to test. And the king got curious, saying, Yeah, tell me about your three swords. Zhuangzi says, I have the sword of the Emperor. The Emperor is the one who is in charge of whole China. I also have the sword of the King. The King is the one of each kingdom. And the third sword is the sword of the commoner. So I've never heard about the sword of the Emperor. What is the sword of the emperor like? And Zhuangzi says, The sword of the emperor, he says, He says, the sword of the emperor, the tip of the sword, is the city, the valley of Yen, and the city of the stone wall. And he has the country of Qi and Ru is the big biggest mountain in China as display and it has the country of the Jing and the country of Wei as its spine and it has the country of Zhou and Sung as its sword guard the country means the kingdoms. These are all the kingdoms in China. And then it has the kingdom of the Han and Wei as its hilt. It 
we have known at this this point how good a uh, how good a uh, a Zhuangzi is uh, at using metaphors. So basically, he says the sword of the emperor is the whole whole emperor, the whole China. So he's imagining the whole part of the land of China as his sword. So each of the kingdoms can be only be his blade or his spine or its teeth or its tooth. So being the emperor, he, he can use the whole of China as his sword. So he says the sword is brought forth in accordance with yin and yang, with nature's roots, nature's way. So how do you readiness in spring and summer, so wielded in autumn and winter? So this mighty sword, you thrust it forward, and there's nothing that will stand before it. If you raise it up high, there is nothing that can be above it. And if you press it down, there's nothing that will beneath it. If you swirl it about, there's nothing that can surround it. Uh, it means, imagine, just remember in chapter 1, of this book, Zhuangzi. Zhuangzi talks about this big fish that's that's thirty three thousand miles long, and it turns into this giant bird, and it's just this this one swift wing went up to ninety thousand miles. So you can see that Zhuangzi style, Zhuangzi can be have a way that can use our imagination, use our words, really enlarge our our view, our scope of thinking. So imagine this whole land is your sword, and and it's so mighty that that you can you can point it up. There's nothing can be above it. You put it down, nothing can be below it. This is how how big and strong the sword is. So Zhuangzi says, when this sword is put to use, all kings return to their former obedience. It means when you, when you being emperor and then you use your power right, all the kingdoms, all the kings will obey to you. That is the power of the sword, and the whole world submits. So this is the sword of the emperor. So the king, after he heard Zhuangzi's description of the sword of the emperor, he is dumbfounded. He never heard somebody talking in this way. And he appeared to be in this, this utter loss. He doesn't know how to grasp this. So then he says, Okay, so that was the sword of the emperor. I kind of understand. I kind of understand. But he says, Okay, then what is the sword of the king? What is the sword of the king? And Zhuangzi says, the sword of the king. It has wise and brave men for its point. Men of purity and integrity are for its blade. Men of worth and goodness for its spine. Men of loyalty and... ...for its sword of purity and integrity for its... Just a minute, 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 let me see. It has 
It has wise and brave men for its point. Men of purity for into integrity for its blade. Men of are for, forth in goodness for its spine. Men of loyalty and, and sageliness for its sword guard. And heroes and prodigies and wise people for its hilt. So when it comes to to ruling a kingdom, these are the, the men who actually be who actually is sword of the king. Basically these are men who help you to become successful ruler of the kingdom. He continues to say, this sword too, thrust forward, meets nothing before it, raised it in counter a nothing above, and pressed down, it encounters nothing beneath it. Still also a very mighty, uh, tool. So he's saying above, it takes its mocking from the heavens. And below, it takes its mocking from the earth. In the middle realm, so that's another, a Chinese philosophy, believe that the Chinese trilogy, uh, 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 what's the word, the three, Trinity, the heavens, the human, and the earth. So it's basically saying each model, the heavens and the earth, and in the middle it brings harmony to uh, harmony and peace to the people of the kingdom. So this sword, when put to use, he says, that everything within the four quarters of your kingdom will listen to you, will bow down in submission, will, 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 will obey your, your rule. And he says, none will fail to heed and obey the commands of the ruler. This is the sword of the king. The king says, so the sword of the commoner. So what does the sword of the commoner, Chuangzu says, the sword of the commoner, is used by men with messy hands and a bristling beards, with flouching hearts tied with coarse tassels and robes cut short behind, with those who glare fiercely and don't use much of their words. So Zhuangzi says, these people, they are using their swords as the sword of the commoner. So he says, these swordsmen, what can they do? They slash at one another and your presence. So now we really can see Zhuangzi is slowly, 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 slowly bringing the topic back to where he wants to get it. So he says, above, it just chops off chairs and necks. That's what the swordsmen are doing. And below it just gets open livers and lungs. So the image is gross, but that's probably very, very um, honest. 
true description of what the swordsmen are doing in a fight. They end up fighting each other and killing each other. Drunker says, those who use the sword of the commoner are no different from fighting cocks. Cocks. Well, I don't know about here, but traditionally in China, there are usually cockfights. And they have cocks get together, and then the men will um, try to arouse them to to have a fight and people can bet on this. So Zhuangzi says, your, your swordsmen are, are diff no different than these cocks, these fighting cocks. So why would they be of use to you? So any warning that their, their lives may be cut off, they could be died any morning, so they're of no use in the ministration of the kingdom. Imagine that after you've after you've listened to Zhuangzi talk about mightiness of the sword of the emperor, your mind, your heart, your scope will be enlarged with this big, and, and the mightiness of the um, of the sword of the king, and all the these good men helping to support it, and then suddenly you talk about oh. So what these swordsmen are doing are just fighting cocks, killing each other. What 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 use do they have? How can you not really, in this comparison, feeling that this uselessness, that this ridiculous, the smallness of, of indulging in sword fights? In the end, Zhuangzi says, "Your Majesty, Your Majesty, you have the ability." To, to to use the sword of the emperor, which means if you do well, if you become a good king, and you even have the possibility of becoming the king of whole China, then yet now, look at you, you're just indulging yourself, being obsessed in your your, your fondness of the swords fighting, the sword of the commoner. So he says, if I might be so bold. I think that since I'm rather unworthy of you. So if you were the king, after you had heard all that Wongsu said, what would, how would, how, what can we say, right? It'd be like, yeah, right, right. It's like waking up, what have I been doing? So the king, have you heard what Zhuangzi said? Apparently it was probably time for lunch, and he, he, his royal chef came forward with trays of food. However, the story says, the king merely paced round and round the tables. That means he was so taken by Zhuangzi, what Zhuangzi said, that his interest is not in eating now. He's still processing what Zhuangzi's words. So Zhuangzi says that your majesty should seat yourself at ease and calm your spirits. So Zhuangzi said physically, why don't you just sit down and think about all this all over again. And the fate of the sword is all over and finished. I, I have done what I have come to do. So the story in the end says after that, the king didn't emerge or come out of his palace for three whole months. Which means he's really... You can tell by that he really has... In a way, Zhuangzi has been very successful in persuading him.
So the king realizes what he's doing, and he stopped his his three year this obsession with sword fighting, and his swordsmen therefore have no use, no use whatsoever for him anymore. I really like this story. I hope you do too. It's just that this whole story, Twangsu's plan of trying to get about to persuade the king to to really coming out of this obsession, this, this very damaging obsession, and to be able to fulfill what he needs to do, his responsibility as a king. So. Imagine persuading others is not a juicy job. <laughs> I know how stubborn I can get, so he needs a lot of he need he needs to have be very wise, to be very smart, to be to really be really be kind of understand the person that you're trying to persuade. And to really find a way that you can get to the king. And Zhuang Su didn't, didn't come up with the sword of the emperor, the sword of the king, and the sword of the commoner. For any other cases, for any other cases, no. They haven't heard of any other cases, because, because he would use, wouldn't use this to persuade somebody who is not the king of Zhao, who does not have this, this, this obsession with swords fighting. So, so this um, Zhuang Su's word, specifically uses to help in a way to wake him up, the king up, to wake the king up from his obsession, from his waking up, he gets pulled out of that energy that's been swirling and then this is like Zhuangzi's work is the sharpest sword passes through to get to the king, to be able to save the king, that for the past three years, like nobody has been able to get through. So this is an amazing story of Zhuangzi. I really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I will see you next week. Take care.